What's a red flag? That screams drop this class immediately. Professor starts off the first day with I don't believe in teaching. Proceeds to explain that we should just teach ourselves advanced physics out of the textbook. And he has office hours if we really need it. Four people, myself included, had signed up for the class. I pieced out of there immediately. You're not here to be taught. You're here to learn. When the first day's intro is way over your head and includes concepts and terminology you've never heard of, and you look around and realize your classmates seem comfortable and familiar with what the professor is saying, that's when I realized it was not the class for me. Happened to me twice. Freshman me. First math class. The prof whips out of the first few classes will be easy, so it's not really worth showing up the first month. But the school makes me do this as an introduction so here we go. Then he filled the entire four panel blackboard for a single exercise. I dropped out after a month. What in the world math class were you taking freshman year? Four year analysis is the only class I've taken that needed more than two boards for a problem. Maybe solving systems as matrix equations? I remember those taking up a lot of space. At least if every single step was written out in full. Two boards is still a bit much. Though. Oh oh good thinking. It could totally be matrix problems. The teacher being proud of having a low passing rate. Not many people pass my class may improve your teaching. Sure classes like organic chemistry will have lower passing rates bc it's memorizing a lot but come on. You want your students to understand your class. It's a teaching job. Not a fail everyone you don't like job. Worse, it's not even that people didn't do well. In my physiology class in university, the professor bell curved the whole class down because our average is higher than the previous years and he wrote an email saying he does not believe we have better ability than the previous years therefore the exam must have been too easy. People lost anywhere from 3% minus 6% after the bell curve and many people dropped by a letter grade. This is a lecture style class where he literally does not know the name of any students in his class of almost 500 students and have never spoken to more than a couple people in person. You do just fine if you just memorized his lecture slides plus the textbook because the exam is a test of pure memorization. It was a huge slap to the face to get an email saying that he thought the class isn't smart enough to do well so he dropped our grades to match previous years. Escalated through many complaints, but the university decided to support his decision to drop our grade. This is a red flag for the entire university that they would support this kind of bullshit. My university, in Canada, only did upward bell curves. No one ever got their marks reduced. That's just demoralizing and cruel. I never had any grades curved down in college in my American university either. Though I don't know if that was university policy or I just got lucky and didn't have any teachers who were that much of an asshole. Took a college course where the teacher printed a name tag for you on cardstock. Had to keep it in good condition the entire semester and got points taken off if it wasn't on display on your desk or if it became damaged. No replacements allowed. Oh I had a version of this but we were allowed to make our own. So long as it was legible. So I at least got to frantically fold together the little Toblerone shaped identifier before some classes with lab paper lol. Yes it had to be shaped like that. I had the same thing in my philology class. I had no idea philology was a thing until I almost made fun of you for saying it. The study of Phil. You'll be competing against one another for your grade. Said in lower level classes. Or this class will be done in all group projects. Welcome to university in Singapore. Explains why they all come to Australia for uni. Can you explain this? I was thinking of uni in Australia. Australian uni is a hell of a lot less competitive than in Asia. Which is part of why we get so many students from Asia here. Same in the US. I went to a university that has a big engineering program. There were a ton of foreign students from Asia getting their engineering degrees. Microprocessors class. Online with no actual zoom sessions. Just email. Might as well be a self-paced instructorless course. Resources include links to crappy or non-existent it videos. And a giant PDF of some outdate mind-numbing textbook. 80 pgs of assigned reading per week. Instructor has does not engage. When asked for some alternative internet resources. Says any search engine will help you with that. 
has super high expectations, but then randomly gives you 100s, or says that the assignment was secretly extra credit, and doesn't matter anyway. Also just looks like an absolute prick based off of his avatar. Based off his avatar holy shit he didn't even bother to provide a real picture? To be fair I'm in several online classes and have no idea what any of my professors look like when they do live video lectures. They just share their screen and talk. So no real photo is not uncommon for online classes. In my experience. Look to your left. Look to your right. Only one of you will pass this class. Apostrophe. I've seen this way too many times in this thread. Which is a good indication of how common it actually is. My question is. What do teachers get by doing this? I had a prof like this once who just derived some sort of sadistic pleasure from knowing that she had failed 40% of her class and that they'd be stuck with her for another semester where she might have the chance to fail them again. Disgusting. Honestly. Why become a prof at all if all you're trying to do is play mind games? Fail fast. The idea is that there are some classes and they are ideally the first class you take in a subject. So people see a lot of them that basically are there to keep out everyone who shouldn't be in a subject. Instead of having people drop the major piecemeal, they put the gatekeeper class right at the beginning. The examples I know best is the first calculus class in the general ed statistics class. At my college, half of first time students failed calc and something like 25% of repeating students. Stats was slightly better, but it was still way higher than any other math course. If you're going to fail out of your major at some point, it's better for you if you fail fast. That way, you can change majors or find a job that doesn't involve college. I do support the trades without wasting your time taking classes that end up being worthless to you. And on the other hand, if you can pass that class, odds are you've got what you need for the degree. Because while the courses will get more challenging, they probably won't get harder. To get the same grades in future classes, you probably won't need to put in more effort. At least, you won't if the college designed their classes correctly. Honestly, it's harsh but I can see the cruel to be kind logic here. We are told to basically do everything possible for students to pass. Many students really don't have what it takes and would be much better off doing something else. But we take their money anyway and give them this valueless degree. Things like this actually ensure the students who make it have worked for something of value and the others don't waste too much time finding something else they excel at. This. I have had way too many students in my classes who do not belong here and probably don't belong in college at all. But they got here because nobody ever let them literally fail and repeat classes until they learned the material, causing them to be unprepared for the next class and automatically fail. Letting students advance without understanding the material, in math at least, is not doing them any favors. The issue should have been addressed back in middle school but, since it's not, the burden is placed on me to fail them for not knowing how fractions or algebra or anything works. A 1 credit class that has more work than a 3 credit class. So most lab courses? took a chemical lab over the summer once and had three labs a week all with pre-lab and post-lab work to do. Easily the busiest class I have ever had. First day being asked to read a 300 plus page novel by the next class. I'm sorry. I also have a job and four other classes. The world doesn't revolve around your class. I went straight to the registrar's office and dropped. Reading this makes me think that when you're registering for classes, you should be able to view the drop rates from past semesters for both courses and professors. Must buy latest version textbook that was written by professor or prof who says ask permission to use restroom. This is a thing. How often does that happen to you? At THE bathroom thing. And do you have to ask to use your own restroom during online class? You just bring your laptop with you. Leave the camera on though, to show the teacher you are really doing that, while also asserting dominance. HMM. Not a problem, since I usually live a stream all of my bowel movements. Tried really hard to get in limited seats in Japanese class, only because I loved learning new languages and cultures. Two days in, an M guy started showing up and converted it into daily anim convention. The professor was easily overwhelmed dropped in less than a week. 
Some of my friends took Japanese 101 in college. The professor had each student say why they joined the class. And a vast, vast majority said that it was so they could read anime and manga in the original Japanese. The professor wasn't very amused. P. I just wanna say that wanting to learn Japanese in order to understand anime and manga is perfectly valid. These people want to be able to consume their favorite media in its purest form power to them. Any reason that drives people to continue learning a language is a good reason. We shouldn't be gata keeping language learning. <laughs> Professors who refuse to let students use the bathroom during class. Or just generally treating college students like they are children. Listen. Shithead. If I'm 22 plus and paying to attend your lectures for my degree. I'm going to go pee when I need to get off your high horse. This isn't middle school where I need to ask for a hall pass. Had a teacher once who reprimanded a girl for leaving in the middle of class to use the bathroom. Girl said she'd gotten her period. Teacher told her to handle it before class. Okay. I guess that's how that works now. Thanks. I'll just let my uterus know to kindly wait until I get home to start spontaneously ripping itself to shreds. Wonder why I never thought of that before. When the teacher is absent for half a fucking year then assign a shit ton of work and doesn't even teach. Then you come to find she takes all assignments from a quizlet so you 1. Can cheat on all tests. And 2. You can just teach yourself and say thank you to the original quizlet owner bc they teach better than your shitty chemical teacher. That's so specific. <laughs>